very much. Today, I'd like to teach you all a tiny bit of rocket science. In 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first person to ever go to space. He took off from Soviet Russia on a barely modified missile, stayed in space for about an hour and a half before coming down and landing safely under his parachute. And only eight years later, half a billion persons were watching live as Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first humans to ever walk on the moon. In eight years, we'd gone from our planets to our satellites. And now, 45 years later, we're celebrating the 15th, 15th anniversary of the International Space Station. It's an impressive spacecraft. It's as big as a football field. And in 15 years, 221 persons have visited it. Some for as long as a year. We're wrapping up actually the first year-long mission. So we're le learning to live in space. But, sorry, why is it hard? How do we get there? And why do we say it's not rocket science to say that something is easy? Well, going to space is easy. Space is not far away. Space is only 60 miles up. So you could go, and people have done it, by taking a small rocket or a small plane, go very fast, and launch yourself into an arc. But you'll touch space, float for five minutes, and then you fall. If we want to go to the moon, if we want to go further, if we want to go to the space station, we need to stay in space. And what the method we use to do that today has been known for centuries. This is a drawing by Isaac Newton. And Newton thought, what if we put a cannon on top of a mountain so high that the tip was in space? And what if we fired that cannon super fast? Well, the bullet would still fall, but because the Earth is round, instead of falling towards the Earth, it would fall around it. And because you're in space, there is no air to slow you down. So you're falling around the Earth, and without any power, you can stay like that forever. And that's what we call an orbit, and that's what we do today. But the problem is, we don't have rockets, we don't, sorry, we don't have cannons that powerful, and we don't have mountains so high. So we use rockets. But when I said, oh, you need to go fast, I mean fast. It's hard to grasp, but the people in the space station are traveling above us at 17,500 miles per hour. And it's at the minimum speed you need to go if you want to go to space. It's a bit hard to visualize, but to give you an idea, if you were going at that speed, you could go from here to Edinburgh in about 10 seconds. You circle the Earth in an hour and a half. So we use rockets. Rockets are a pretty simple system in, in the end. It's fuel that you burn, and by burning that fuel, you create a lot of hot gases. And because you expel all those hot gases at the back of the rockets, there's a reaction to that action, and you're getting pushed forwards. That's Newton's first law for the scientists in the room. But now we have a problem, because we need to put the spacecraft in orbit. So we need to push that spacecraft very fast, but we also need to carry the fuel that we're using to push it. So every time you add a pound to your spacecraft, let's say you need to pack more snacks with you. Well, now you need a bit more fuel because the spacecraft is heavier. But you've added more fuel, so you need bigger engines because you need to push that much more fuel. But those bigger engines actually use more fuel. So you add fuel, so you add weight, so you add engines, so you add fuel, so it keeps growing. So much that for about a pound of spacecraft, you've got 40 pounds of fuel and rockets. But you've designed your rockets, a big tank, big engines, and your spacecraft on top, and launch day has arrived. And finally, the engines roll to life. And the rocket rises very slowly at first, because the engines might be very powerful, but you have all that fuel that you need to lift. So you rise slowly, and slowly the engines suck the fuel from the tank, and the rocket accelerates faster and faster. And there's a point where the tanks are almost empty, and the engines are too powerful because the rocket is so light. And the tanks, well, they're mostly empty metal now, so they're useless. We need to shed weight. So we plan ahead, and instead of launching a rocket that's just one big tank and big engines, well, we launch a rocket that's two tanks and two engines. And once we've sucked all the fuel in the first tank and the first big engines, we drop them, and they'll just fall back. That's what we call the first stage. And now the rocket is much lighter be because we're already going fast. We don't need as much fuel anymore. 
So we've got smaller tanks, and because it's much lighter, we can have a much lighter engine as well. And we'll do that once, sometimes twice, sometimes three times. There's rockets with five stages, until finally we shed the last stage because we've reached that, magic, ma that magical speed of 17,000 miles per hour, and we're in space. And the spacecraft can, no, can now go on to do its mission, go to the space station, go to the moon. So the principle of launching rockets is not that hard. It's not rocket science. What's hard is that for rockets to be able to reach space, we need it to be about 90% fuel. So there's only 10% left for everything else, for your spacecraft, which is in the end why we're launching the rockets, but also the tanks, the engines, which are very complex and very powerful, and all the systems that are going to split the rocket in bits as, as it goes up. And that's wha what is hard about rockets, is that you need to build those, those very complex, very powerful systems to be as light as we can, and for that you need very good engineers, very good manufacturers, and that costs a lot of money. So much actually that the average modern rocket costs about as much as a small passenger plane. And you could think, well, it's actually not that bad because, well, a rocket is something at the tip of technology and plane, we used to, we're used to them by now, we know how to build them. But the difference is the plane is going to have its first flight, be fueled, passengers board, you fly, you land, and well, we just refuel the plane, it flies again, and it will fly tens of thousands of times in its lifetime. We've built the $60 million rockets, and as we went up, we just discarded it. We just dropped every stage in the sea. So next time we want to launch a satellite, we need to rebuild a whole new one. And that's what is complicated. We need to spend an enormous amount of money to get anything to space. That hasn't stopped us. In 55 years, we've seen it. We've gone from capsules barely big enough for one man to sit in them to spacecraft so big that we can live in them for months at a time. We're learning how to live in space, that's magical. And we're still making progress. In December, SpaceX did something that no one had done before. They launched the rockets, and the first stage separated, the second stage went on to orbit with a satellite, and the first stage, in the meantime, used the last few drops of fuel it had in its tank to flip around and come back to the launch pad. And if we can start recovering parts of rockets, we can maybe start reusing them. And if we can start reusing rockets, well, launching is going to be much cheaper. And if we can launch rockets for cheaper, we can launch more in space and maybe one day finally send humans to space and go photobomb our rover's selfies. <laughs> Thank you very much.